Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says we must esteem them for their work's sake in the Lord. Amen. 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 So we esteem Pastor Chuckman. Amen. 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 The great and mighty one of God, known for many years. And so, Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's nothing, everything that, that the sisters say about her is true. Yes. This is a really awesome woman Amen. of God. And I just thank God for her being in our presence. Yeah. Yeah. and every one of y'all today. Amen. 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 Let's truly thank God for my wife. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. And, uh, and the blessed seed that he has given me. Amen. Thank God for my seed that he has blessed me with. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Amen, that our seed, glory be to God, that be like the sun on the seashore. Amen. Amen. Like a star in the heaven. Yeah. Amen. That was one of the major promises that God has promised Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. And we just, just thank God that even though if we be Christ and we are Abraham's seed according Amen. to the Bible. So that promise is made to me and to you. Amen. But we just have to lay a whole claim of those promises that God has promised <laughs> us. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Do you know that they, man, there are some things that that God cannot do and for you until you get in the place that where God can do it for you. Amen. 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 There, 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 there's a place, there's a place that Moses says there, God told Moses that there's a place beside yes. me. Yes. And if you will come on the cliff of the of the ah, rock. Yes. Uh, the cliff of the rock represents the revelation ah. of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Ah. Because there's a place beside God that we can go to, that you can enter. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Today we will be continuing talking about the anointing. Amen. Oh God, it's a very powerful subject. Uh, the anointing, especially when you know and understand what is the anointing. Because there are many teachings, there are many uh, teachings that I heard about the anointing. Amen. Some is some is accurate with the word and some is not according to the word. So now today we're gonna we're gonna find out, amen, what it is to be anointed. Amen. What it is to be anointed. Not, not amen, not just say you anointed, but what is the evidence of one being anointed? Amen. Because the anointing, remember last week I said. The anointing confirm your calling. The anointing on your life confirm your calling. That means that you don't need nobody to confirm who you are. The anointing on your life will do the job, will confirm who you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And last week we talked about uh, one of the purpose of the anointing that will will be empowered to carry out his will on this earth to empower us to carry out the will of God to empower us to carry out the will of God amen and let's go over some of the some of the reason amen that we talk about uh, that the, the, the purpose of the anointing last week that it is you know the empowerment of God empowerment of God that means God himself is living in a vessel and empowering that vessel to accomplish the things that God has purpose and plan for him so this is why the anointing have nothing to do with feelings it has nothing to do with feelings because uh, sometimes that, amen, you can get so adapted to feelings. And if, and if you don't feel nothing, you will start saying to yourself, the, uh, the presence of God is not here because I don't feel anything. The anointing has nothing to do with your feelings. The anointing has to do with a person. And the anointing have a name. 
and the name is Christ Jesus. He is the anointed one that live inside of the righteous. Amen. So today we're going to really talk about the purpose of the anointing first. I want to deal with the purpose of the anointing because everything have a purpose. Amen. Amen. The word purpose means meanings for something being existing. So if you understand the meanings of the anointing, I think that we will learn to appreciate the anointing. When you don't understand the means of something, you abuse it because you really don't understand the value. So the value only comes out of anything that until we understand it, we can never gain value to nothing. So the anointing is this, it ought to be so valuable because without the anointing, we all are disqualified. Without the anointing, we all are disqualified. That means that we cannot do his will on this earth without the anointing. Uh, you cannot. You cannot. And so a lot of times that what we uh, discover in church that we call things that we see looking good and sounding good we call them anointed. For example we can call uh, somebody that have a gift of singing and, and they sing so good and tell the chandelier shake and everybody get up and they say Ooh, what a great marvel powerful anointed woman of man of God but the person might not be anointed the person is gifted yes. Yes. the Bible says the gift and the calling of God is without repenting so I can be gifted but not be anointed you see what I'm saying a gift will make people move, but the anointing destroy yokes. Amen. So we don't need this to shake. We need you to be deliberated. We didn't just need you just to clap, but after you get through clapping, you ought to be delivered. You ought to be set free because the purpose of the anointing is to destroy every yoke and remove every burdens. The purpose of the anointing is to destroy every yokes and remove every burdens. Amen? Amen? So the anointing is not a feeling. The anointing is a poison living in you. Our first, our first text is going to be taken from Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Spirit of the living God, I pray God that you'll have free cause in this house today. Let your word have free cause. Let your word penetrate the hearts and minds of your people, God. Give us clarity of understanding that we will understand. For the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing and all you get get understanding. And Father, I pray God that the eyes of understanding will be filled with light in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that the engrafted word of God begins to, my God, begin to shape us from the inside out that we'll be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And I ask this in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In the book of Isaiah, uh, the 10th chapter, in verse 27, amen, this is the foundation of what we are about to, to build upon. We are about to build upon the, 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 the Isaiah 27, uh, I mean, chapter 10, verse 27. If you have it, say amen. amen. Can we all please stand and we can read as a corporate body, amen, this particular text, amen. Amen. Yes, begin at verse 27 of Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Yes, begin. And it shall come to pass in that day that this burden shall be taken away from off the shoulder and his yoke from off his neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed to destroy the people. Amen. You can remain seated in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we have seen the purpose. Amen. One of the purpose, one of the main purpose of the anointing. Amen. 
The Bible says it shall come to pass that thou burden shall be taken off, off of thy neck because of the anointing. So the purpose of the anointing is to remove burden off your neck and to destroy yokes out of your life. Now, what is a burden? A burden is something that restricting you from doing the will of God. Amen, amen. It, it is something that restricted you. When somebody have a burden on their neck, they cannot go this way. Only way they can go is this. It is like what they put on the neck of the ox. Amen. To take the ground, they will put a burden that keep the ox working, and the ox can't go no other way but work. And so the burden is to control the ox neck. So they'll put the burden around the ox neck that the ox will be able to do what they want him to do. So the Bible says that the burden shall be removed out from your neck and the yokes will be destroyed. Now just remember that yokes doesn't yokes don't be removed, yoke must be destroyed. Because a burden is different from a yoke. A person can be burdened down with, with all kinds of stuff. And literally in the spirit, this burden is, is up to their neck. Until they really cannot function right. Do you ever experience a burden that, amen, that, that really try to stop you from even thinking right? Because you're thinking about responsibility and all kinds of stuff that you find yourself going in, going through. And, 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 and it will choke you. It will kill you slowly. But a yoke is a stronghold. A yoke is a stronghold. That will limit it, it will limit it, your movement, amen, and your developing in Christ Jesus. A yoke is a stronghold. So the devil's job is to put burden upon the people and yoke the people down so the people can never be free. So now it's going to take the anointing to bring liberation. It's going to take the anointing to set captive free. It's going to take the anointing to destroy the yokes and remove burden. Somebody say the anointing. The anointing. Now, the, 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 the anointing is, is, is not a feeling, but the anointing is a poison. Just go to Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 and 19. Again, we are going to see, amen, the, the purpose, amen, the purpose in the power for the anointing. Luke 4 and verse 18. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Hallelujah. Luke 4 and verse 18. And if you have it, say amen. 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 The Bible says in Luke 4 and verse 18, Jesus is speaking. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is is upon me because he has anointed me. Watch it now. He has anointed me. Now the purpose for the anointing. So Jesus had the anointing on him even though he was the anointed one. He had the anointing on him in order for him to do any kind of work he had to be anointed. Amen. Glory be to God. And the Bible said, Amen, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Now, somebody, I want you to look at assignment. You have been anointed for, for a specific assignment. Hallelujah. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To preach the gospel to the poor. So we can preach the gospel, which is the good news, to the poor without being anointed. Amen. It is the anointed that empowered the gospel that you're preaching. The anointing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh God, this is the anointing that breaks hold and liberate captive and liberate and set God people free. It's the anointing. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Now, we, we're going to see first assignment, preach the good news to the poor. The poor is not meaning, she's not talking about them that lack money. She's talking about them that poor in spirit. He said, you're poor in spirit. Even though you got the money, but you're still poor in spirit. 
and they care true to you is going to take the anointing to break the yoke and remove the burden. Hallelujah. So he says now, number one, my the purpose, my purpose for the anointing is to preach the good news to the poor. Hallelujah. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. The second purpose for the anointing is to heal broken vessel. Do you know there's so much people are broken and they come to church broken and we can do all the rituals sing and shout but if nothing is anointed they go back home broken the anointing design to bring healing to the poor hallelujah to bring healing to the poor is to restore broken hearted hallelujah you never know how broken a person is because nowadays you can't see it if you don't design it because I can be smiling but it don't mean that I'm not hurting because a lot of times broken people they smile but they're hurting inside and you don't even know it's going to take the anointing to bring liberation and bring them back together hallelujah uh, somebody said the anointed uh, Oh God Almighty, uh, glory be to God. Our uh, church now, I believe that we are living in a time now, glory be to God, that Jesus Christ, amen, uh, has anointed his church uh, and he's, he won his church to demonstrate the anointed. Uh, that means that any times we, we come in the house of God, uh, we got to come with great expectation. Uh, you can't just come uh, dealing with the things that you're dealing with. Uh, you just come with the problem, but you ain't going to leave with the problem uh, because there ought to be anointed in the church. Uh, oh God, an anointed ought to come out of that vessel uh, that the claiming Jesus is God. Uh, the anointed ought to be seen uh, that is able to change a poison life. Oh God Almighty. Oh God, I love it. Oh God, He says He has anointed me to heal the broken hearted. I know you're broken. I know you're hurt. But there's an anointing in this ministry to bring healing to your brokenness. And you ain't going home until you get healed. Oh, the devil is a liar. Glory be to God. I will not give the devil no credit. I will not say uh, if the devil know uh, if the devil know the plan of God he will not allow you to come to church uh, I'm not going to give the devil that credit uh, because the devil can never know the plan of God uh, because the plan of God is hidden from the devil uh, oh God that's why he cannot stop what God has confirmed uh, and that's why we ought to thank God for the grace of God uh, oh boy some of us right in here we know what it is to be bound with something. Uh, we know what it is to struggle. Uh, we know what it is to carry pain. Uh, we know what it is to hurt. Uh, we know what it is to cry by ourselves. Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, we know what it is. Uh, but oh, I come to tell you today uh, that Jesus Christ uh, is in the house. Uh, to heal every broken heart uh, and set captive free. Uh, uh, God Almighty, oh God Almighty, and I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, I'm a Oh God bless you Lord I thank you I thank you Lord And Jesus said oh, Anointed to heal the broken heart oh, To preach my God To preach deliverance to the captive Oh God someone Has taken the devil I'll take you captive Oh God You must say pastor How could I be captive And I'm still here You're captive in your mind, huh? that you cannot expound your mind outside of that opposition. Huh? That means the enemy holding you captive in your mind. Huh? Uh, if you're captive in your mind, huh? you're captive every